Hi, my name is Nate Abel. Uh, this is my studio in Casper, Wyoming, our print shop, more like it. Um, so welcome. So my artwork um, draws on a lot of personal history and storytelling from family members and, and people and, and just experiences that I've had. And so it's, it's hard to pinpoint a specific moment, I think, that in my childhood that influenced me uh, in, in art making. I had a grandmother who really encouraged me to draw, uh, gave me art supplies for birthday presents and stuff, and I never knew what to do with charcoal pencils. I just sat on the front porch and drew the houses in my neighborhood. I needed to do something with my hands always. My birth father passed away in a car accident when I was one and a half. And, and he was a carpenter. And so I always thought I would build houses like he did. That was always like my, my dream or what I, in my mind. And so I was always drawing house plans and things and and because I thought that was where I would go. And uh, it's weird how the world throws a wrench in your, in your wheels. I took one art class in high school uh, after we moved here to Casper um, and it just wasn't a great experience for me. And so I invested all my my know-how into music um, and played the viola and was in choir and musicals and stuff and uh, seemed destined to do musical theater and I woke up one morning and was like I want to do graphic design and so that was part of how I got here as an artist. best piece of advice I've ever been given um, and I've, I've heard it in a number of different ways like there's a there's a Picasso quote about how inspiration has to find you working um, there was a visiting artist in Laramie when I was a student there named Bob Erickson and he's a he's a printmaker and he was there collaborating with students and stuff and he gave a lecture and he kind of said the similar thing and it's always kind of stuck with me which was you know I, I schedule X time every day to be in the studio, whether that's sitting in a chair, reading a book, tearing down paper, or if I'm actually making things like printing stuff or drawing things or like just the act of being in the space and being open to like being in that in that place. I think and that that for me has been something that's always stuck in the back of my mind. It's something that's incredibly difficult. Um, and it, I, you know, I'm working as, as a teacher too, to like do as I preach. Um, and so that's like one of those things that I'm always trying to like find that time between family and everything else going on in the world to, to you know, even if I'm just sitting in a chair and reading in the studio, like that's a valid part of the creative process. A, a what is, uh, you know, I, I grew up in West Central Minnesota in farmland. Um, and that's always been kind of that agrarian landscape is always something that I've, I've found inspiration in. And as I've embraced the West, like it's changed, um, the color palette changes and, and, and I've kind of let that kind of happen. But, um, you know, I, a lot of my my work is drawn on my experiences and and, um, and on you know stuff that's sometimes not the happiest and I but I think it's a it's a I use the art to kind of process some of that those those things and so I think that's kind of a what inspires me is you know my my own personal experience my story um, the story of um, what family tells me about my dad or the stories we share sitting around a fire just about growing up as kids and things like all that stuff is playing a role in what I do. Um, an artist that I really love um, and that I think probably influences a lot of kind of what I do is William Kentridge. Um, he's a South African artist who um, works in printmaking and drawing and I love the way that his drawings are all about the history of the drawing and that's really how I, part of the reason I, I'm a printmaker is because I love the history of information that's left behind. Um, I don't addition a lot of work as a printmaker and so that's that idea of using a plate multiple ways or in different ways to create different stories and things is uh, like I, I think that I kind of pick that up a little bit from, from Kendridge that and his work is just delicious and wonderful. 
Well, I'm pretty invested. Um, uh, I, I'm a, I'm a printmaker. Like that's my, like if someone asks me, oh, you're an artist, what do you do? I, I will almost always immediately say I'm a printmaker. Um, it's, uh, I'm lucky, lucky enough to have a print shop. Like I have uh, etching press and litho press and I've got litho stones and ways to etch stuff. And I'm, I'm surrounded in the space by all the things I need to make stuff. Um, and so, uh, process is a huge part of printmaking uh, and the parts of it that I really love are the, all the in-between bits of graining a stone or prepping a plate or um, all of the things that slows me down from when I'm just making a drawing or something. Um, just because it, it makes me kind of sit and reflect and think about what am I doing? Where am I going with this? Um, do I really want to go here with this? Um, it's, it's a, it's a really meditative process for me and that sinks in with the other parts of my life. And so I, it's, it's a, the process of print in and of itself, like the, all the prep and everything is, I think, probably my favorite part. That and every time you pull a print off of a press, it's magic. Like you're just like, even though I, this is the 50th one I've pulled, you're like, wow, yes. Or you, your heart breaks because you're like, well, that looks like trash. So I like throw that up and throw it in the in the bin. So um, I, yeah, it, it, the, my favorite process is the process. Everyone out there, you, know, you watching me right now, you've encountered prints whether you realize it or not. Um, so if you've ever gotten a brochure from someplace, you're looking at something that was printed on paper. So that um, has its, its origins in what I do in this space. Um, so originally, so that that brochure was printed using offset lithography. Its granddaddy is stone, or great, great granddaddy is stone lithography, um, where we draw on a, a piece of Bavarian limestone and you draw with a greasy material and then you can etch that, etch it in a magical alchemical process um, that stabilizes the grease in the stone and then by keeping that stone wet, you can roll new ink into the image area and, and then you can you run it through the press and you can print as many as, as, as you want. Um, so that's one, one thing that I do here. Um, another thing I do is uh, I do a lot of intaglio or etchings. So working on copper plates where you incise lines into the surface of a plate um, or etch it using um, ferric chloride um, you can put a resist on it, draw through the resist and then etch it. And then you wipe ink into that plate uh, and you run it through a press, applying thousands of pounds of pressure per square inch um, underneath some blankets. And that's where the magic happens. You're pushing pa paper into the grooves of, of the, the, the plate and then you, you've got an image. So, and what I like about all of that is, because uh, I don't, usually work just within one media. Um, I often are using, you know, either lithography and intaglio together, or I'm using uh, relief in intaglio, or all three of them. Those are kind of the three big um, print, reproducible print media. So um, I, I love the how I can layer different things together and play with composition and stuff. And so that's, I mean, that's the, the, the kind of technical situation in a nutshell in in general art's important just because of the it communicates with people it's all about um telling your story or learning another person's story uh it's uh it's a way that people can grapple with all kinds of things trauma uh celebrations uh and it, it's just always been something that I've kind of been called to. And I can't imagine 
the world without it. If you think about it, like art is, is everywhere, right? Uh, I've worked as a graphic designer in advertising, so we're surrounded by advertising and social media, like social media wouldn't exist without art. Um, you know, everything visual in our world, like its origins come from that visual art. Well, I hope that you've uh, learned something. Um, I hope I wasn't too boring. Um, thanks for coming by. We'll see you later.